Hello, iSing subscribers. It's Sinash Bennett here again with another video edition of The Working Singer. And I'm coming to you from Amsterdam, the Netherlands, where we are in this beautiful, amazing, gorgeous building, and it's a million degrees. There's no AC. So forgive us for shitting a little bit. Um, it's sexy. We call it a sexy, sexy old shitting sexy summer glow. But I'm here in this amazing place that is the little bit. The Lobebet, the Lobebet, Lobebet. I've screwed up her name. Because of the gonna, she's going to introduce herself with a wonderful guest. Hi, hi. I'm Dinah. I'm Babette. <laughs> this is Babette Lobebet, and we're at the Babette Lobebet. Uh, is it Vocal Academy or just Music Academy? Music Academy. Music Academy. And um, for those of you who don't know who Babette is, you're going to find out because she's <laughs> the business. I call her boss lady because she's just she's the business, and it's been amazing. Um, it's been a pleasure to meet you and get to know you and so here. kind of work with you and feed off of you. Um, but that is, actually, will you tell our viewers your vocal coach to everybody here in Holland? And well, well. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh everybody. No, I started off as a vocal coach uh, when I was, well, actually pretty young. After the, do you call it the same in American Conservatory or not? Yeah, in Conservatory. So I finished Conservatory and then started teaching people. And I really love teaching kids, young adults, uh, on their way to the top. You were studying at the Conservatory? Yeah. And was that was that studying to then become a teacher or that was a singer? A singer. Oh, okay. you always have, a, in Holland you always get a degree. So you can also teach at oh, music okay. school, or but ah. my, my, my biggest dream was to be a singer. That's so right now, so the dream was to be, be a singer, but yeah. right now you now own this amazing uh, facility. It and, changed yeah. along the way, okay. along, along the path. How, so you, prior to that, well, let's go back. When yeah. did you start singing? What was your, why did you start singing? Who inspired you? I grew up in a very musical family. And we always get uh, motivated by my parents to do whatever we want to do. So that was really a great situation where we were able to play piano, get singing lessons, get musical education. Mm -hmm. And I was totally into that. So I had my first professional role in an uh, opera here in Holland. La Bohème. Was La Bohème, right? when I was 12. Wow. So, and from that day on, I got a taste of what it's like to be a real professional singer. And I didn't want to do anything else. So. so up until the age of 12, you were training with your voice, yeah. you were training piano. And my parents were a little bit, well, old-fashioned in a way. They said, like, okay, if she's going to sing, she needs to be really technical. So mm -hmm. I, at a very young age, I started singing classics. Okay. Right? And I got a classical teacher. Oh, okay. Teacher. Yeah. So I love... Oh. Pause. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay? Yeah. Okay. So just lose that. I'll, I'll edit it. Yeah. <clears throat> I love the fact that you started early with training and yeah. how it's kind of come back to be a big, well, big, it's been a, con um, a consistent theme in your life and now it is yeah. what you have sort of become. Yeah. Um, I wanted to touch on that, but I, I do want to talk more about you as a singer mm -hmm. the, be before the academy, yeah. before you became yeah. the coach. Um, you said that you did La Bohème, the yeah. opera. What were some of the other gigs you did as a singer? You did backing vocals. I did well. a lot of backing vocals, actually. That was my main, my my main business. Mm -hmm. When I, between the age of eighteen and I think twenty-seven or something, mm -hmm. uh, after conservatory, I was playing all the gigs and and I did the whole club scene in Holland and got a lot of uh, studio gigs. And just a session musician mm -hmm. and did all the you know, backing vocals for. Big artists here in Holland or were Belgium. You working, were you working as a uh, recording to become a, 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 a solo artist at the time as well? As well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I had like both, well, as everybody knows. Oh, yeah. You have to get you have to get a okay. place yeah. to do your thing. Yeah. So um, I did a lot of session things like jingles, mm -hmm. radio, commercial commercials, mm -hmm. and then I did all the backing vocal gigs. And besides that, I was trying to make my own music and yeah. trying to get my voice out yeah. there, like I'm yes. an artist as well. Of course. And then in 1997, I got the opportunity to uh, record my own album. And it was like a little success mm -hmm. here, and I toured and did some incredible things with that actually. And then you yeah. had two, so two recording. The last yeah. one was on my own label. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, that was uh, five years ago. Okay. Yeah. But that was a totally different thing because that was at a point in my life that I had already had 
quite successful business. Right. Uh, and then it was like, now you have a little more. Yeah, and also I wanted to do that for myself. Your because the singing mm -hmm. suddenly became a second place right. instead of uh, what it was at the beginning for my career. So Very interesting. Yeah. I want to get, you're saying a lot of really good stuff. Um, what were some of the struggles that you experienced as a singer? I know for me and a lot of my colleagues, um, you know, the number one thing is, Finding gigs, yeah. staying, um, you know, staying relevant. Who, how to meet people? Yeah. I get so many emails, and you know, people are like, "Well, how do I get in? How do I get on tour? How do you know?" Did you experience some of the same um, challenges? Of course, or of course. Well, 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 to be honest, I was lucky enough to get signed by a record company, mm -hmm. by a record label. So for me, everything came together the moment that I got the opportunity to write an album together with a couple of really good producers in mm -hmm. Holland. The only thing is, looking back, I don't know if it was the right time for me. Because mm -hmm. I was so busy with everything, like studio gigs, with uh, backings, uh, so as a backing mm -hmm. vocalist, that I, and I liked it all, but I wasn't really focused right. on my own career. Mm -hmm. So, I don't think, and, and maybe it also was a way to find out which was actually a good thing, and that's mm -hmm. what I have right now. So right. it was, what made it a struggle is the fact that it's, you you don't get guarantees right. in this business. Right. Never. Was that, did you recognize that and say, okay, I need to kind of dip my hands in all these different pots, or, or, pot, or was that just who you were, like you did a bit of everything? I'm an organizing beast. <laughs> that's what I call myself. I like to organize things. I'm always... Like, I see always opportunities okay. in everything. Okay. So, um, it was more of a focus thing. Okay, for you. For me, and also, um, I don't know, it's also a little bit frustrating when some people get, for me, it was a phase where I had to go through that there were a lot of people that I was doing backing vocals for, mm -hmm. and they weren't, in my way, not as good the, the, right. as I was. <laughs> oh, wow. So, for me, that Preach. Turned, yeah, but for and me, is that transition yeah. to acknowledge, but am I that good? Mm -hmm. Or is there something else that you need to be have if you want to be the, the pop artist? Yeah. And that was a big thing. I had to be able to, to get some self-reflection. Mm -hmm. But I can sing, you know, I can bell that note out and I can do this. And, I, and I'm on stage, I'm like this. But am I actually an authentic artist? Right. And that was something that I had to go through, and that whole experience of my transition, like maybe I don't want to be that, mm. or I'm not able to turn because I wanted to sing soul, but I also wanted to sing pop and right. I wanted to sing rock. Right. And I, so for me at that time, mm -hmm. if if I would start all over again at my age now, mm -hmm. 42, <laughs> then it would be super, of course, because now I don't now want you know, exactly. but at that time I was a little bit too arrogant, I had a big mouth, I was good in what I was doing, but a real focus for mm -hmm. myself was difficult. What was the vision when you, okay, so the vision, where this, this sort of theme for this, this um, issue is called vision and transition, Yeah, and I oh. feel that you yeah. are um, a you know just a, a prime example of that yeah um it sounds like you had a lot of vision for what you wanted to be um at different and it, it, it yeah. sounds like it, it it you went with it there's this book called um who who moved the cheese or who moved my cheese or something yeah and it's like this mouse who there's like the cheese and he goes to get the cheese and he gets the cheese and the cheese is gone and so there's two mice and one gives up and goes oh okay yeah. there's no cheese so i'm just not going to yeah. do anything and the other mouse is like oh well I yeah, to find this cheese. Yeah, and you sound like the mouse that was like, I need to go find my cheese. Exactly. Something there yeah. was something happening, yeah. and it was you. not easy. No, to find it. the cheese. No, it was not. <laughs> but when you got to that point, did you recreate the vision for yourself, or did you just allow it to be not shaped? Not really. It was. It just. Well, it, I don't think that anything happens just happens. Of I, I, I do strongly believe in that there is a path for you and. Mm -hmm. I just had to find a way yeah. to the cheese. Mm -hmm. But for me, it was a little bit of struggle to let go of my ambitions to be the pop artist. Mm -hmm. How did you do that? I really, I really wanted for you, like, I mean, because you're so I successful. Got, I got so successful being a vocal coach. Okay, so with this other thing, so kind of that helps, of course. Yeah. 
Because one of the biggest things about this this column, the working singer, and what, we try, what I'm trying to bring out is these opportunities, these options, yeah. and to get singers like myself and people who are like you to start thinking outside of the box and start, you know, yeah, create, ch changing their visions or yeah. creating something for themselves. Um, a before it's too late, or before they, you know. But that that's always the wrong uh, situation. If you think like I wanna do, more, I, I wanna explore myself, and I need to. Um, get real in the music business, but how do I do it before it's too late? That's always wrong. Well, That's, yeah, no, you know? it, yeah, it's the rock. But what I, but what I, what I find is that there's a there's a comes a certain period, even in my career and so many mm -hmm. other people that I know, where they get stuck. And this, yeah. is, this is a lot of the questions that I get or the emails, yeah. or the conversations I have with a lot of singers, yeah, who feel stuck. Yeah. Who have, you know, struggled in their, their pursuit of, of a solo career, yeah. or they put out an album, and they you know all the different uh, uh, issues that there that are that there are, um, and they just are, they feel like they run out of options. Yeah. And so, what's next? But that's what I'm saying. I think through what I've learned mm -hmm. uh, and being able to recognize in myself different talents and different things that mm -hmm. could be a also a success mm -hmm. that was a bit of a transition and has to do with letting go right and that ego that's like boom oh, do you know what i mean because that's we all have it. of we, course you know, of course it's what makes us who yeah are, but that's the highest but then that, that was a transition i think mm -hmm. for me uh for two years okay that i was struggling like yeah but i want to say no I want, but how mm -hmm. can i combine those two and now i found my niche of course i found the thing that i love most that's making music and spreading my love for music and singing with young talent. I mean, hello. So so you said you started vocal coaching at, at what age? Very young, because I did it for money. Okay. So I'm gonna be very honest. What we did during our conservatory, you had to have some experience and also I needed the money. Yeah. So I was teaching. Skills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was teaching um, uh, other kids in my neighborhood mm -hmm. or people that couldn't sing but really like to explore their own voice and I had fun with that but it wasn't a serious business to right. be honest and then in, when I got to the studio work one of the producers who was a very famous uh, producer in Holland er Eric Fontaine he asked me uh, to be um, in the studio when there were a lot of singers mm -hmm. that were recording their albums mm -hmm. because he he was saying, now you have a certain way of explaining to people mm -hmm. that it's so no bullshit yeah. mm -hmm. that everyone can understand. Yeah. And I need that in the studio because I have a lot of singers that are okay singers, but not really as good technically as you. Yeah. But they're also not good in, in, in trying to comprehend. Yeah. They just want to sing. Yeah. And the way you tell people how to use their voice is so clean mm -hmm. and simple. Mm -hmm. So yeah, well. Oh, I can do that, of course, and I did that for a couple of years, and I love that. I love to be able to help uh, people in a short amount of time mm -hmm. to get to the highest uh, level of what they're capable mm -hmm. of. And I was pretty good at that, and then uh, a new show came in town, Idol, mm -hmm. the Dutch Idol, and uh, they asked me if I was interested in, interested in helping the participants of that show. The, con the contestants. The contestants. Wow. Okay. I did that, and I was the first first vocal coach here in Holland that uh, also uh, came on screen. Right. Well, and I started off with 20 students at that time, and then the moment I got on screen, and of course I was a major success, yes, then 20 became 25, 25 became, then I had to rent a little place, and suddenly I had a small school. Ooh, wow. And, and this wasn't, this was, there was the contestant on the show, but then you had all these people that were like, I well, they saw me on television. Right. They saw me work on television. So the best, it was the best advertisement I could <laughs> wish for. Wow, you know? that's amazing. And that's then incredible. also, and, and I used the fact, like, I can explain to people in a no-nonsense style mm -hmm. how you can get the best out of your own voice. Is that how you always were? Is that like the Dutch kind of blunt <laughs> to the point? <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, <laughs> well, you know. Um, I think it's really important. Like, how did you? How, is that just how you've always been as a person? Or yeah. did you develop that? Because no, this industry no, can be harsh. I'm and always like that. And I think like... music is not for the elite. Let's make that. You know? Yeah. Why would you say things in a really 
complicated. complicated. It, 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 there's also another way. Yeah. And uh, we all like to use our voice. So why would you keep that for a, a small part of the society? That's, that's, in my opinion, that's ridiculous. Yeah. So, and I'm always like that. I'm always so you started with Idol, and yeah. you did X Factor, Pop Star, and now you are the sort of, can I say, the vocal coach on The Voice? Yeah. I'm the lead. <laughs> you are the lead <laughs> vocal coach on The Voice, Holland. Yeah. I don't know for you. For those of you who don't know, and I mean, I've had so many friends who've, who've auditioned, and yeah. I've been on the show as well. Um, the Voice originated here in Holland, and it's gone to London. It's gone all over, all over Europe. Sixty-three countries. Yeah, in in incredible. Um, and you've also done some stuff in LA yeah. now, uh, in Latin America. Yeah, it's La Voz Kids. La Voz well. Kids. Yes. How has that? I mean, are you even? How, how do you manage all of that? You got a school. Yeah, you're still running. You're running the school, and you're yeah. doing um, the show. Yeah. How do you How do you balance all of that? You well, I team. have a I have a great team, a super team, uh, which I uh, surround myself with during the last ten years. Mm -hmm. So it's not going from this day to this day. Of right. course, it's something that you build. Of course. And uh, we now have the school with six hundred students. La 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 la. I'm super That's proud incredible. of that. Congratulations. And I have uh, 12 teachers working for me who are all in the same direction, which is necessary, of course. We have and you're 42 years old. That's yeah. quite well, young. Well, you think? Well, I mean, to, to you know, I, I, I do know a lot of singers at this point that are now trying to think of, okay, this, did, this other thing didn't work. Now they're looking for... I think I'm pretty that lucky. Transition. I'm pretty lucky that I was um, being asked to do, do this right, right, so when I was 26. You know, right. no, even yeah, about 26. Mm -hmm. So I have now it's a totally different step. Now I want to step up. Mm -hmm. I have this, and it's going well. We moved to LA three years ago to expand my horizon. Mm -hmm. I have a lovely team, a great, hardworking team here. And together with the opportunity that I got to be the lead vocal of the voice and the voice kids, mm -hmm. which gave me also uh, a, a big, how do you say that, like way to combine all my skills and, and do it in, in, in a, for a show that's so well known for their coaching. You yeah, know, like really helping right. people. Well, absolutely. Really trying to uh, get the best out of every voice. I do love that about the show, the fact that you do have these celebrity coaches. They're not yeah. judges, they're coaches. Yeah. And they're encouraging, and yeah. they work side by yeah. side, and then there's the team. Yeah. And you see the fellow. And you see that, yeah, and you see that grow. Yeah. I mean, I even just did season two, and I got so attached yeah. to some of the singers and watched yeah. them grow, and, you know, some didn't make it, but it, the process is, is really amazing, yeah. because that's really, you know, in a very short, you know, way, what you what you need, and that's career. what I what, what my vision and method stands for. I mm -hmm. want to be able to help people in uh, the time that I have, mm -hmm. and sometimes that's two hours. Yeah, uh, get to get them ready for the stage, and eighty percent of that is is something between your ears. You right, know? it's not, and I know a lot. Of, I've learned so many things the last ten years because I know a lot of technical super singers, mm -hmm. uh, and they are not able to be. Uh, the, the next back, uh, the next back is best, yeah, the star. Yeah. But I also know a lot of people that aren't that good in uh, using their voice in a proper way, mm -hmm. but they're out there. Yeah, doing and it. that's what I like the most to help those people to be authentic still, mm -hmm. but uh, help them to uh, use their voice in the best way they can possibly do. And for me to work with the voice and the voice kids, that's that's it. That's, that's it. That's it. Represents what I'm doing. doing. Um, I wanted to read these words because uh, these is I believe this is sort of your your mantra. Okay. Um, believe. Yeah. Dream. Yeah. Do. Brave and dare. Yeah. Absolutely. That that's what it's all about. Yeah. You have to be able to believe in your in, in whatever you believe. You know. But I think it's really important that you have a strong belief in what you want to do mm -hmm. and where you take it from I don't care but it's something that you really have to be like I believe that I can do that I believe mm -hmm. that I want to do this I that's what it starts with of course I always believe that I would make it in mm -hmm. some which way or another but music is my 
it runs through yeah. my body. Yeah, so I had a strong belief in something. Mm -hmm. And now I know what. Yeah. And at that age, I was still struggling. But I knew, and I, yeah, that, that's something that, that's number one. Yeah. Me. It seems like it, it's been consistent and you've held that. Even though you didn't know what it looked like, um, you, you, you still felt that. Well, listen, it's one of the, the most difficult things yeah, to absolutely. stay true to yourself absolutely. and keep believing in your own dreams. Absolutely. Especially when you have like disappointments along, along the way. way. And, and it sounds cliche, but it is real. It is real. It is. It's, I mean, it's, and again, it's yeah. simple and yeah. cliche. Yeah. But the most simple and cliche things are true. So, Sidebar, who are yeah. some of your favorite singers? Oh, wow. I have a lot. Kate Bush. Mm -hmm. Prince. Uh, Stevie Nicks. <laughs> um, wow, I have a lot, but those are a little bit more of the old school. What about new school? Because you work with... Um, a lot of kids, you're doing with yeah. these kids, you have, um, I'm going to be working with you tonight, on some yeah. of your young yeah. professionals, yeah. Really um, to that. who are some of the, you know, that you're kind of coaching the next generation? Yeah, well, like name-wise, yeah. I mean, I think people like Nick Jonas, for mm -hmm. example, well, Nick. I, I really like what he's doing right now and reinventing himself, what are you seeing that? He's like super that? talented. Wow. I've done some, but not, but some stuff in the studio with him, and he's like writer, producer, just all these other things that you didn't see when he was exactly. part of the Jones Brothers. So that's why I'm saying yeah. maybe for him it's not a really a big, yeah. big deal, but for, for me us. and in Holland yeah. or in Europe, it's like, wow, he's actually pretty yeah. good. <laughs> right. But he's more than that, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I think that's a really upcoming guy that we have to look for, like wow, and in, in Europe, there's a lot of things going on. I mean, mm -hmm. somebody like Sam Smith, mm -hmm. or, yeah, uh, well, there's a lot of things like yeah. James Bay, mm -hmm. Sam Smith, all these new voices that are coming out. That's incredible, absolutely that's really good. Who got really lucky with whatever their dreams and their you know, and not that they didn't have and a, a lot of hard work, hard work. Oh, of course, a lot of hard work, but they're so for been able to, yeah. Exactly, Maybe but I also know the story behind that, that they were all oh, yeah. looking for. Oh yeah, oh of course, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So what's next? What is the future vision and the next transition for Babette the Bay, with the academy, with the TV stuff, yeah. education? Well, what would be great, of course, and what we're trying to do right now is to build a bridge between uh, LA and Holland mm -hmm. and maybe, a, well, try to get talent from Holland an opportunity there and the other way around, exactly. try to get them here to give them a, a, a sight of the European music market. You know? It's such a big world. I mean, I'm Canadian and, you know, not that it's, we're north of the border. Yeah. Um, but, you know, everything for me was New York, LA, New York. Yeah. Um, and being able to work as a backing vocalist and tour the world, I'm just like, it's blown my mind the amount of opportunities and how global, obviously, music yeah. is like, the community, the international language. And it's not that big anymore. Well, no, it, no, it's no, not. It's, it's, like, it's, it's, it is smaller and it's more accessible. Yeah. And it's possible. Yeah, so that's... that's and especially through YouTube and all that yeah, kind of, of things, it makes it really together. easy to... Or easy. It's also suddenly huge. Yeah. Because everybody can go to the internet, but it helps a lot to know what's going on in the world. And it helps so. to have an institution like yeah. yourself and yeah. like this building yeah. to be able to, you know, Knock on your door and of say, course, "Hey, of course. can yeah. you take me in?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Well, it's still. I mean, of course, this is just one spot. Mm -hmm. But we really would like to build that bridge, that musical bridge between those two continents. And besides that, we're uh, hard working on the fact that it's the musical education mm -hmm. in Holland schools is not as good as in America. I mean, I don't know if you're. Um, I think there's more attention for that than here. It's it's changing because music in schools has, has been a dying program, sadly. Oh, really? It has, oh. um, and they're really trying to get. I mean, it, it did exist and it does. Yeah. But it's starting to in, in certain places, you know. And so it, it, a lot of um, independent artists and, yeah. and creators and educators are, you know, educators and business people are are, are getting together with 
musicians and artists and creating these sort of independent institutions yeah. like at an academy like yeah. this, and I'm working with some people in LA as well, um, to try to keep that kind of yeah. thing going. And so I think that's super important. It is important. It's, I mean, it's important as sports or whatever. So. It is. It is. Um, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I'm so grateful that you've given us your time. Of course. Um, For you and, always. And uh, I'm so excited about tonight yeah, and I'm excited about the next uh, I can't wait to see what's going to happen on The Voice this season yeah a lot <laughs> <laughs> a lot a lot um, some great talent some really yeah good, yeah, yeah. Exciting. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, thank and I you. wish you all the best. Thank you. And um, yeah, we'll do this again sometime. It's Maybe in LA. It's too hot to kiss. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you soon.